Imagine that you have a neighbour who's borrowed your kettle and then returned it to you broken. Then, when you confront them about it, your neighbour says that he never borrowed it, it's not broken, and it was already damaged when he borrowed it. You'd immediately know that your neighbour is a liar and that he doesn't intend to take responsibility for the broken kettle. But even more annoying than that, he's made it difficult to argue with him. Where would you even start with those arguments? If you try to argue with any of the three claims, he can just jump to either of the other two, and he only has to prove one of them is right for him to win the argument. This is called kettle logic, or la logique de chaudron. Not to be confused with the pot calling the kettle black. It's a term coined by Jacques Derrida, based on a story told by Sigmund Freud in one of his books, but if I were to name the phenomenon, I would call it the Vouch fallacy. Or perhaps the Vosch fallacy. I've never been clear on exactly how to pronounce that name. <laughs> Why are you wearing gloves? Why do people wear gloves? What? It is an article of clothing. Why do you wear clothes? Obviously, because there's no social stigma against exposing one's bare hands, it's obvious that my hands are cold. For anyone blissfully unaware, Vosch is a socialist who frequently debates people on live streams and responds to political arguments on his own live streams. I would say he's good at winning debates, maybe even the best debater I've ever seen. Not because he's right, or because he formulates logical arguments, it's quite the opposite. He's good at debates because he speaks quite quickly and very authoritatively. He can talk nonsense more confidently and more rapidly than most people can talk sense. It's not quite that he lies on purpose, but that he doesn't care at all if what he's saying is true or not, and that he's not even keeping track of everything he's saying. It seems to me that he has a kind of superpower that makes him incapable of experiencing cognitive dissonance at all. He contradicts points that he's made the day before or even just a few minutes before in the same conversation, and it's utterly... He contradicts points that he's made either the day before or even just a few minutes before in the same conversation, and he's utterly comfortable to do so. All that matters to him is making his opponent look less educated on the subject, and less sure of their position than he is. If Vorsch broke your kettle and you challenged him to a debate about who should pay for the repair, he might say not only that he never borrowed it, that it isn't broken and that it was already broken when he borrowed it, but also that owning a kettle at all is evidence that you were born with unearned privilege, or that there is no ethical consumerism under capitalism, so your ownership of the kettle is invalid. Or he might say that the idea of a kettle being either broken or not broken is an arbitrary distinction used historically to justify genocide. Or he might say all of these in the space of five minutes. You might be expecting me to show some clips of his debates to use as examples, but I honestly can't be bothered. Getting bogged down in any of Vorsch's debates is a complete waste of time because he doesn't believe in the things he's saying. He only cares about winning at any cost, and he's said so himself. Or maybe when he said that, he didn't really mean it because he's not keeping track of any of the things he's saying. I don't know. <laughs> if you've watched him in a debate, you probably already know what I'm talking about, even if you've not put it into these words and you've never heard of kettle logic or gish galloping. What can men do against such reckless sophistry? To engage in a debate with Vorsch or someone else with such a low regard for the truth often risks making yourself look like a fool, even if you're right unless you're willing to stoop to dirty tactics yourself, which I wouldn't suggest. I think the best thing you can do is to state your case as clearly and honestly as you can. Really examine all of your beliefs and the line of reasoning that led you there, and read around the subject to make sure you haven't missed any obvious bits of information that might be important. Imagine that those who disagree with you are in the room with you and are going to respond to what you're saying, and think of how you would guard yourself against that. Then, when you've devised the best case you possibly can as to why you're right, state it with all the unvarnished self-assurance of Vosch. And just leave it at that. Refuse to elaborate or quibble about the details, or just ignore all of the ridiculous intellectual gymnastics that your opponents are going to do, and feel confident in your own intelligence and logic. Or if you do want to get into a back-and-forth kind of conversation over a text, like in a comment section, you could use my husband's rule of thumb for arguing online, which is to respond with an ever-decreasing amount of text so that your replies get shorter and shorter until you're sending a single word or an emoji. In this spirit, the Chad yes is the ultimate response. 
I suppose I'm just sick of seeing debates online that go on and on for hours and seeing people who I agree with getting trounced by people who have such a, uh, a low regard for good argumentative practices and being intellectually honest. Using logic is simply not enough in the face of someone who has superior charisma or even uh, who just talks faster and louder than you, unfortunately. <laughs> Watching Vosh in a debate always reminds me of that famous line from the Yeats poem, uh, the best lack all conviction while the worst are full of passionate intensity. That kind of just sums it up, I think, and I, I wish some of the <laughs> I wish some of the best that I know were full of such passionate intensity. My favourite thing about Vorsch is the theory that his father was a model maker for the science fiction TV show Babylon 5, and that Vorsch's initials and birth date are written on the Hyperion vessel as a serial number. I say theory, but some quick internet checking does seem to confirm this. It's pretty cool, I think, although I personally prefer Deep Space Nine. Derek! Babylon 5's a big pile of s***! Get out! Yay!